Welcome to ICE number 40 Investment Property Case Studies. We'll be looking at a question uh, called Kiki. So it's 11 marks. We're going to write 11 sentences for that. As a result of rising property prices, Kiki purchased five buildings during the current period in order to benefit from further capital appreciation. So which means the property we are holding is for investment purposes. Fine. Kiki has never owned an investment property before. In, in accordance with ICE 40, doctors are aware that they can measure the properties using either fair value model or cost model. Yes, you're right, but at the time that we purchase the item, we're going to be using historical cost models to recognise it at the amounts that we've paid. And subsequently, we can choose fair value or cost model. But the first priority, the preference, will be the fair value model. However, they are concerned about the impact that this choice will have on the analysis of the financial performance, position and cash flows by current and potential investors. In other words, your answer should primarily focus on, from the investor's point of view, of how the investment property would have impact on the P&O, SFP and statement of cash flows required. Discuss the potential impact which, uh, which this choice in accounting policy will have on investors' analysis of the financial statement. Your answer should refer to key financial performance ratios. So in other words, as I said, you have to focus on the investors' needs rather than talking about the general accounting treatment of investment property. So here, from my perspective, I will structure the answer in this way. So a question called Kiki Company, or Kiki Limited. And the answer should focus on the statement of financial position, the p and and the statement of cash flows. As I said before, because we've never accounted for the investment property before, and this means we've got two accounting policies that we can use. So, for example, we can discuss what is the cost model, because the cost model will have different impact on the financial statement. We can also talk about the fair value model. Yes, it will also have different impact on the financial statements as well. So first of all, we've talked about the cost model. We're going to be using the costs minus accumulated depreciation and we minus the potential impairment expenses for the investment property value. Our conclusion for a cost model is the value will simply go down, not going up. You've got the first point, perfect. How about the fair value model? You would say that the gains and losses would directly go into the p and Okay, and that's another point that you can get. Of course, you can also mention in the fair value model because you've never accounted for it before, and that's why there'll be no depreciation for that as well. No problem for that. So, what would be the impact on different financial statements then? If you were to use cost model in the p and for example, the profit would go down. And from the investor's point of view, because I also trade shares, uh, one of the indicators that I keep my eyes on is the indicator or measure called earnings per share or EPS. And in this case, because of the recognition of the depreciation expenses each and every year using cost model, the profit will simply go down. Okay, so that's the idea behind it. So, here's the other points that you can get. Okay, we put that there. But at the same time, if I were to use fair value model, we will see that the fair value may go up, and here, the gain that we can recognise will be quite high, or go down, there will be losses. In other words, you make a conclusion. It's more risky from the investor's point of view. Okay. You've got another mark. As we said before, 
if the fair value goes up, in other words, you can use the investment property as the asset security to raise additional funding, to increase funding for your business. And that's quite good. But how about the fair value goes down? Of course, you can't use the property as a security for additional funding, or you can require less funding needed. Of course, get another one mark. But we can also say from the efficiencies point of view, the fair value go up, the asset turnover ratio, because we take sales revenue, divide into asset value. The denominator goes up, that the asset turnover ratio will go down. Conclusion, it's less efficient than it should be. So, you've got another mark. So how many marks that you've got so far that we've talked about the general description for the accounting policies to uh, three, four, five, and six marks already. I think that's enough. But how about for the um, statements of financial position then? So, as I said before, the fair value model, the fair value of the asset goes up and goes down. Yes, that's primarily related to the uh, statement of financial position measure. Yes, you can put that into a PNO, no problem for that, but obtaining the same marks here, no problem for that. But how about a cost model then? The cost model in the statement of financial position. In other circumstances for the fair value model is where uh, if the fair value goes up, we recognize additional equity. So the gearing ratio will go down because we take long term debt and divide it into equity. Equity goes up, if the fair, fair value goes up, the gearing ratio will go down. So it means it's less risky from the investor's point of view. We get another one mark. So how about the, for the cash flows then? For cash flows impact here, first of all, no impact on cash flows of which accounting policies that you've used. Okay. Here's how you get one mark. At the same time, we're going to say that the acquisition of investment property or reduced investment property, the proceeds they're going to spend or get should be included in the investing activity in a statement of cash flows. Here's how we get one mark. You can also say from the investor's point of view, in general, we may use underlying profit or true profit, which means we're going to adjust for depreciation and fair value changes in our statement of profit or losses. Uh, to show the true picture of the profitability of this business. At the same time, if you're using cost model, we're going to adjust for depreciation, which means um, using EBITDA, taking earnings before interest and tax, and to plot depreciation expenses back for, comparati uh, for comparability reason to make financial statements with investment property can be comparable across different entities. So, we've got another two marks here. So in essence, how many marks that I've got so far? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the final mark that we can get we can also say 
that the disclosure requirement is what? I would say the disclosure requirement would be quite different. And we are using the cost model and a fair value model. For cost model, we also have to disclose uh, the accumulated depreciation as well. And there will be different requirements if you're using different accounting policies because you're accounting for the investment property for the first time. So that's how we get the 11 marks. Quite a difficult question uh, uh, in, in, in the exam. And make sure that you're ready for the basic investment property knowledge that we've talked you through in our tuition recording. That's the end of the question debrief and look forward to seeing you in the next of our session then. Bye. APC, accounting for your future.